Hey, Zane Griggs here. So, why is uh, wheat now so different than it has been, I mean, for the last several thousand years we've been eating wheat? I mean, why are we all of a sudden allergic to wheat? Why are all, the, all these people having celiac disease and wheat allergies, which are not the same. You can have uh, a wheat allergy without having celiac, by the way. But uh, why is it so different? I mean, haven't we been eating this for the last four or 5,000 years? Well, the answer is no, we haven't. Um, not this wheat. The wheat we have now was developed in the 30s and 40s through bioengineering and some, you know, just basically genetic, you know, breeding, basically crossbreeding, basically. Not bioengineering, like changing the gen they changed the genetic code by crossbreeding certain types of wheat, okay? And they did this, okay, good intentions, uh, but, you know, they were, they were trying to increase the starch quality so they could produce more food and feed more people, okay? But what happened in the process is that they uh, multiplied the amount of gluten in our wheat uh, by 10 times, okay? So it went from like 5% of the protein in wheat being made up of gluten to now about 50% of the protein in our wheat is made up of gluten. And they didn't consider how this would affect us genetically, how it would affect our biome, so they wouldn't even really think about the biome, uh, I'm sure. But they, they increase the starch, lower the fiber. So there's, it's a lot starchier, has a lot less fiber, and has all of this gluten, which really, the gluten throws off our system completely. And it creates a much higher, I mean, for instance, the glycemic index and glycemic load of a wheat bread or white bread there really isn't much difference. There isn't no difference in the glycemic index. So how quickly it spikes your blood sugar is actually a little higher than two teaspoons of table sugar. Okay, and about the same load for you, you uh, blood sugar watchers out there, it's, about, it's actually a, maybe a higher load than two teaspoons of table sugar for wheat bread or white bread. Same thing, because of the gluten, the starch, lack of fiber. Plus, um, you know, back then when we were making wheat bread, um, you see now we bleach it, we crush it, we pound it into glue, basically, and, and then make it into some kind of spongy bread thing. They used to soak the wheat kernels let them sprout, so they're actually kind of alive and sprouting. Then they fermented them before making them into bread. Okay, so soaked, sprouted, fermented, we don't do any of that. Okay, we just bleach it and crush it, all right? Um, and of course your breakfast cereals are even, even higher, higher on the glycemic load. Uh, but the, uh, the, the, the effect, okay, on, on humans, I mean, our, the wheat we had 100 years ago was more similar genetically to the wheat they had in Europe 2,000 years ago or in the Middle East 4,000 years ago than it is what we got in the, uh, in the 60s, in the 50s and 60s when they started putting this into the market. And the wheat, you know, we used to have amber waves of grain that were like four feet tall, okay, in this country. And now it's like a two foot tall, it's called dwarf wheat, okay? Uh, so it's no wonder, haha, get that? You'll, you'll catch it later, uh, that we have all these health problems now uh, with wheat. And if you think, oh, I don't have celiac, well, I don't have wheat allergy, uh, allergy I, I, I would beg to differ. Um, we all have some reaction to gluten on some level. Uh, gliadin, which is a compound in gluten, it's like a like, you know, com protein compound in the gluten, uh, actually has the same effect on all humans, and that is it breaks down the permeability of our colon. So our gut permeability, which means creates leaky gut, which allows compounds out of our system that, that really don't enter, you know, out of our colon, I should say, out of our gut and into our systems to create inflammation. The other thing about gliadin is it, uh, and gluten is that it can cross over the blood brain barrier. Okay, not a lot of foods and, and things can do that, but it crosses through the blood brain barrier and actually attaches to our opiate sensors in our brain, which means it, 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 and it stimulates them and creates a bit of an addictive effect. You're anybody tell you, oh, I feel like I'm addicted to bread, or I'm addicted to pasta. Yeah, you are, you are, because it's stimulating your opiate receptors, the same ones that receive uh, any kind of opiate drugs, okay? Obviously, it's not as a dramatic effect in the doses that we're getting, compared to if you're, if you're taking, you know, a, a, a codone, you know, a codeine of a, some sort of prescription like that. Uh, but it's having the same effect on those same sensors. They've tested this on, on people. So, uh, and, and, and seen a, a difference in behavior when they're blocking it, even when, they're, when they block it with opiate blocking drugs, okay, that they give to drug addicts, 
who are trying to get them off of opiates, um, they can see differences in behavior and changes in, in brain activity uh, by blocking uh, the opiate receptors while eating wheat. So it's, it's, it's a fact. It affects your opiate receptors. It inflames the colon in everyone, okay, whether you have a celiac or not. But if you're having blood sugar issues, if you're having kind of insulin sensitivity, or, uh, or excuse me, insulin resistance, um, which means you're carrying more than, say, 20 pounds of weight you don't want, uh, or any kind of you know, blood sugar issues with you know, pre-diabetic, um, and or any digestive issues. The two things you want to reduce and really try to eliminate are straight up sugar and uh, gluten containing foods, particularly wheat, okay? So, uh, this, this sounds difficult, right? This sounds like, oh my gosh, it's in everything. You're right, it is in everything. Most processed foods you're gonna read, they're gonna have sugar or gluten in them um, <clears throat> just because as a filler. Things that shouldn't have it, like ice cream, <laughs> okay? And your whole wheat bread has high fructose corn syrup in it. So, I mean, we've just got these kind of fillers uh, that have been put into everything that should, they shouldn't be there, but they're using it to fill because it's cheap. And um, so we've got to be on the lookout. Now, if you just eliminate the big ones, like get rid of the breads, get rid of the cereals, uh, you're going to do a lot to reduce most of your gluten uh, that's coming in. Uh, so if you're looking for a diet to do that, hey, I got one. Food comes, my food comes first diet. I'm going to post a link in the comments or post it below in a, in a button, depending on how you see this. Um, but I'll put it in the comments right away. And uh, it's, it's high veggie, so lots of veggies, so it's good for your biome. Uh, and very, very little, you know, the grains are, are things like rice and quinoa, which don't have gluten in them. So, uh, so we've got some, some grain-free, some, or excuse me, gluten-free grains in there, uh, as well as some other alternatives for a lower carb diet, where it's high, high in veggies, okay, moderate protein, low carb, okay? Uh, you won't starve on it, be very satisfied, it's not low calorie. It's not low fat. You're going to feel good on this diet. But anyway, check it out uh, at the link below. And if you know someone that could benefit from hearing this, please tag them in the comments. I'll talk to you later.